Survive Chris. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Pulse. No pulse, keep it. Okay, Rick. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Pulse. It's gonna be all right. Just swallow a bit of water. That's all. He's been under a long while. Tell. Come on. Flatline. That's it, it's all over. What are you talking about? Come on, mate, breathe! 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 Come on! What are you bloody doing? We're gonna get into a hospital! He's gone! It's all over. Okay, Tommy, straight back to base. Oh, hi, Michael. I uh, just wanted to say that I can't make it tonight. Uh, it's a long story, but something's come up. So I'll call you. Bye. You came well prepared. Well, who knows how long before young Mr Guppy comes home? Uh, if young Mr Guppy comes home. No, he will. Won't leave his father on his own. Ta-da! I'm not playing Scrabble. Well, I play on my own. So tell me about Michael Watchy's face, your boyfriend. Where was he going to take you to dinner? Um. You don't make it easy for people to like you, do you? I want you to take two weeks off. More if you need it. I can't force you to take the time out. But I strongly suggest that you do. Do you understand that? Right. That's all dismissed. Quick games, good day. Oh. Brilliant. Ha ha. Passion. It's a very much abused term. People are always making the mistake of linking passion with romance, whereas in actual fact they're entirely different qualities. What about your boyfriend? Is he passionate or romantic? Um, a bit of both. Like, for instance, he, um, he sends me a dozen red roses on Tuesday. And what does he do with the roses? Does he rip them apart with his teeth and shower them all over you? No, he puts them in a vase. <laughs> Romantic. What about Holloway? I don't reckon he's much of a flower arranger. I don't know. He once bought a lovely bunch of flowers for uh, Senior Sergeant McCall. <laughs> Where are you, eh? What about your wife? I married her to my second wife. Oh, yeah? What happened to your first one? She'd dump you. Uh, she died in a car accident with our daughter. Oh, sorry. Look, um, I've been a real pig. Sorry. It's just... Bingo. Now, you want your sweet and sour with your rice or on the side? Hey, Jim. Go. Go. No way out, son. What's going on? 
James Guppy, you're under arrest for the murder of Mr. Jim Williams. You're not obliged to say or do anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you do say will be used in evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. What? Why am I here? I haven't done anything. Well, you see, Mr. Guppy, we've got um, statements from a few people who saw your boat outside the Williams house on Monday night. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know anything about that now, would I? Well, you see, we've also got a bit of evidence uh, putting you at the crime scene. See, the police divers have uh, retrieved a meat tenderizer from the harbour outside the Williams house. So? Well, we think it was uh, used to subdue Williams before it was chucked in the harbour. I don't know anything about any meat tenderizer. Right. Well, it's my intention now to take your fingerprints for comparison purposes. Uh, you're not obliged to give this sample if you don't wish to do so. You're saying I don't have to give you my fingerprints? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, I'm not going to then, am I? Oh, come on, it's a chance to clear your name, son. If the prints don't match, you can walk out the door. You've set me up. Oh, James, no one's going to set you up. I'm thirsty. One drink. In a way, I think it's noble standing up and doing what you believe in. You know, when my first wife died, I wanted to kill the guy responsible. I really wanted to kill him. He's in jail now. But if he'd have gotten away with it, if he hadn't have been charged, well, I would have felt like a coward if I hadn't have tried to at least seek some justice for myself. It's like your father. A sick man, but he took on Emerald Chippen. A lot of people, and faced with an organisation as powerful as that, and a man like Williams would have given up. The old man never give up. That's why he took Williams to court. Their lawyers were just too good. Afterwards, this Williams bloke sends out a cheque for 20 grand. I reckon they can just buy it. I imagine your old man wasn't too impressed. Mate, it was all I could do to stop from going down there himself. So I went down. Ripped his 20 grand up right in front of his face. You went down there? Yeah, but, but it was just for a minute, I, um, I just said what I had to say and then I left. One minute. Not a very long time to say what you had to say, is it? Your old man meant nothing to him. I bet he laughed when you ripped the cheque up in front of his face, didn't he? Did he laugh, James? So you told him off? Yeah. How did he take that exactly? Real well. He was a bit freaked, reckon he was going to call the cops and that. Was that when you hit him? Yeah. I didn't even hit him that hard. He, he just went down. You panicked. I thought you'd better finish the job. Look, I didn't mean him to die. Of course you didn't. 